this, let's zoom in here. This is an egg in case you didn't know. Okie dokie. And the goal for today is to take this egg. Can everybody see the egg? And we are gonna bring it all the way up to the ceiling and then let it descend. I mean, hopefully it doesn't like splatter further than this. And let's see. Can I avoid this cracking using nothing but, nothing but a mini fridge? I'm kidding. But maybe with some like 3D filament and the X plus three, this video is sponsored. The power rests in you 3D printer. It rests in you. This is by far the stupidest thing I've ever modeled. I'm worried that it's gonna be a bit too small. The length, which I assume is the height, is gonna be 62 millimeters. Z component is 963. Divide that by 62. So we have to scale down by a factor of this. Separate by selection. And hopefully the egg will fit inside of here. There's nothing actually like fastening these together. Extrude along normals. And what I'm hoping is that this like additional rim will kind of to secure it in place via friction export stl the x plus three has its own like slicing software called the kudi or however you pronounce qidi add my stl file navigation is what you would expect mouse to rotate zoom to zoom i don't care about how it looks 0.25 pla let it do the calculation that means our mesh is horrible so let's add a support on build plate only brim we can actually just visualize how it's going to build and we also have this green support. Either way, I'm going to go turn on the 3D printer. It uses Wi-Fi. And now you can see our boys coming to life and we have a, a touch screen door here to access the print. When printing, PLA, remove the top cover. And I filmed a lot of footage of me setting it up. This isn't a tutorial. I'll go over stats later. PLA usually melts at a 220. And here you might be able to see that stuff is dripping. Send to printer button. Bring it to the printer wirelessly. Okay, I'm hearing noises. You can see that not only is our like model imported, but the bed is heating up 37 degrees, which exactly uh, mirrors this. We can actually control this remotely, like 230 degrees. And here's where you can control like speed settings where this thing can go stupid fast. This print should take just over an hour. Just like it said, one hour. Actually, that was pretty easy. Okay, there you go. You just have to use a bit of friction. And I have an egg. This goes in here. Okay, that seems secure. Ah! <laughs> not secure. Okay, this time, this time I'm not getting my floor wet. You know, I'll be honest, I don't have much faith in this. Down the hatch. It didn't, it didn't make it. But I wonder if the shell actually made it. Yeah, it seems like both parts are intact. That means I could launch it again. Down the hatch. So our design did not work, but it kind of stayed inside of here. I'm gonna take that. So I know what you're thinking. How am I going to improve on this design? Well, let's review what went wrong. Obviously these two pieces didn't really fit together, so that can be improved. And second of all, the impact was like just the same as if I dropped the egg. It's not all for naught. And I'm just gonna get rid of this top cap. It just didn't work for us. So this is still gonna be our bottom cradle, but I need to design the top cradle so that it actually actually fits. If we duplicate this and like rotate it, we have like more of a guarantee that this is gonna fit, given that we kind of scale this up enough. I'm just gonna make it taller. This is what engineering is. But now how do we like distribute the impact so it doesn't all go to the egg? If I use my finger and use a lot of force, that's gonna hurt a lot more than if I use the same force and use my entire hand because it's distributed across an area. So how do we get the maximum area at the bottom of this? I just drew it. <laughs> that, that, that's going to be our method. And I'm going to extrude it so it has a bit of thickness. I'm just gonna put it on the bottom and maybe that will distribute enough. And obviously this isn't like enough support and I'm gonna do that in the laziest way possible. I'm gonna use a donut. If I can like duplicate it, make it bigger. Th th this engineering makes sense, right? So I'm gonna join everything together so that we have a single bottom piece. Then we're gonna put this top piece off to the side. That's a five hour print for, for like a stupid piece that I don't even know if it's gonna work. It's sad, but it has to be done. Okay, we've gone from four hours down to two and a half hours. Dare I say this plan is genius. We're gonna go with this one. So the reason I'm kind of hopeful about this design is I think our like flat surface might actually add some air resistance. We might 
also get the advantage of like lowering the velocity of impact. So inside our mechanism right here is our very safe passenger of an egg. Months of engineers working their asses off. I wanna make sure I drop it perfectly flat so it's getting that air resistance, okay? Three, two, one. Oh! Oh! So like, yeah, it's a little cracked. I'm gonna do another egg with this one. I'm sorry to whatever chicken is watching this. So I should just be able to put in a new passenger. Three, two, one, launch. Ooh, please, 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 please. Oh! That's a survived egg. I would like you to see the evidence. The egg survived. Can you make it through two rounds? Okay, <laughs> so he, he got a bit of damage. But we never said yet to survive two rounds. <laughs> Just one. Okay, so that's pretty much the video I set out to make. Like I said, it's sponsored in the sense that they sent me a printer. And typically the kind of thing you do is you like give stats and you like glamorize it. But I thought it would be cool to actually tell a story and do something with it. Just to satisfy some like numbers, I'm gonna go over them super quickly. At the time of recording, it's $650, slightly on sale at 629. Goes at 600 millimeters per second. It really is giant. <laughs> like it really is the size of a mini fridge pretty much, which means prints. It can do a flow of 35 cubic millimeters per second, and its acceleration is crazy. It's 20,000 millimeters per second squared. One thing I actually like that my previous printer didn't have is the wireless sending the G-code. Yeah, I have a hard time switching filaments, but that's just because I don't know what I'm doing, really. If you have any other designs for an egg drop that you want me to try, maybe in some kind of sequel, let me know.